Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We turn now to the man who blew the whistle on the National Security Agency and the expanding U.S. surveillance state. On Sunday, The Guardian newspaper revealed the source of its explosive series on the NSA to be a 29-year-old former CIA technical assistant named Edward Snowden. For the past four years, Snowden's been working at the NSA as an employee of various outside contractors, including Booz Allen Hamilton and Dell. Most recently, he was working at the NSA office in Hawaii. On May 20th, he boarded a plane bound for Hong Kong, where he's remained ever since. Since Wednesday, The Guardian has published a series of articles based on information provided by Snowden. First, The Guardian revealed the National Security Agency is collecting telephone records of millions of Verizon customers under a secret court order issued in April. Then, The Guardian revealed the existence of a top-secret program codenamed PRISM, where the NSA obtained access to the central servers of nine major Internet companies, including Google, Microsoft, Apple, Yahoo, and Facebook. Then on Friday, The Guardian exposed how President Obama had ordered his senior national security and intelligence officials to draw up a list of potential overseas targets for U.S. cyber attacks. And then The Guardian revealed details about an NSA data mining tool called Boundless Informant that details and even maps by country the voluminous amount of information it collects from computer and telephone networks. A top-secret NSA global heat map shows that in March 2013, the agency collected 97 billion pieces of intelligence from computer networks worldwide. The NSA most frequently targeted Iran, Pakistan, Jordan, Egypt, and India. The Boundless Informant documents also showed the agency collected almost 3 billion pieces of intelligence from U.S. computer networks over a 30-day period, ending in March of 2013. In a few minutes, we'll be joined by Guardian columnist Glenn Greenwald, who's written these exposés. But first, let's turn to NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden in his own words. He recently sat down with Glenn Greenwald to talk about why he leaked the documents and why he's revealing his identity. The interview was filmed by Laura Poitras. It was filmed in Hong Kong. It was posted on The Guardian website on Sunday. Lower Ed Snowden being interviewed by The Guardian's Glenn Greenwald. The interview was filmed by award-winning documentary filmmaker Laura Poitras in Snowden's Hong Kong hotel room on June 6. Edward Snowden left the U.S. for Hong Kong on May 20th, has been there since. When we come back, we'll be joined by Glenn Greenwald from Hong Kong and then NSA whistleblower William Binney. Stay with us. Gonna go buy pizza. Love you. Okay, so let's take a look at who's tracking what we're doing online. So let's say we start on Google and then go on to Facebook. Suddenly, all of these organizations are tracking what we're doing. You read your emails, and even more organizations start tracking. That's pretty scary. It's really a surveillance planet. I mean, the United States, in partnership with GCHQ, has created the largest single you know, surveillance apparatus the world has ever known, a mass surveillance apparatus. The attacks in Paris once again demonstrated the scale of the terrorist threat that we face and the need to have robust powers through our intelligence and security agencies and policing in order to keep our people safe. You know, after the Charlie Hebdo incident, Edward Snowden, the man who proved to the world the extent of these surveillance programs in the US, UK and beyond, said, France passed one of the most intrusive, expansive surveillance laws in all of Europe last year, and it didn't stop the attack. If we're missing things, like the Boston Marathon bombings, where all of these mass surveillance systems, every domestic dragnet in the world, didn't reveal guys that the Russian intelligence service told us about by name. Is that really the best way to protect our country? If all of that information 
is reassembled simply by profiling and searches, what could they know about you? And what happens if it's misidentified? Or what happens if I draw different conclusions from the data when in fact it's not true? I mean, data can be manipulated. I mean, there's, I, I'm a living case of that where the government framed me. They wanted the data to be a certain way for the convenience of charging me as a criminal. And they, so I was data, I was literally data framed. Separate I mean, from surveillance and separate from governments wanting to control it or in partnership with corporations or corporations wanting to slice us and dice us and then sell it back to us, right? The technologies that are available to young people now allow us to connect in ways we've never been able to do before. I get, I get great hope from that in terms of what will the, the tomorrow's generation do with it today. Just know what those, what those tripwires are. Just know what those challenges are when you tread in the digital world. <laughs>